in the footsteps of our forefathers. Holiness, holiness unto the Lord, unto the Lord. The Church of Christ, the Church of Christ. We don't want to, want to We teach love. love, we teach forgiveness. Christ, we teach repentance, represent and baptism. Yeah. We teach compassion. Yeah. We teach faith. faith. We love all God's children. We don't teach hate. hate. We putting in work in these last, last days. And if you're going hard, the Messiah's name. Yeah, we teaching how to end it through the straight gate. Hey, we teaching all nations. It just ain't about race. Hey, come on. We under the holy order. Yeah, come on. We under the holy order. Hey. We under the holy order. One nation, one power. The church of Christ under the holy order. Yeah, come on. We under the holy order. Hey. We under the holy order. Hey, come on. We under the holy order. Yeah. One nation, one power. The church of Christ under the holy order. Hey. Stand firm, don't move, saints. Keep the faith, faith. Keep growing in the spirit, church. Elevate, elevate. They ain't no plateauing. We growing every day, day. Get in the spirit of Paul and let's finish the race. The race. We striving every day, trying to get it right, get it right. And our main goal, goal. is eternal life, eternal life. In the mansions of our Father for eternity, eternity. We will never die again. We'll live eternally, eternally. We teaching love, love. We teach forgiveness. Yeah. We teach repentance yeah. and baptism. Baptism. We teach compassion. Passion. We teach we faith. faith. We love all God's children. We don't teach hate. Yeah. We under the holy order. Yeah. Come on. We under the holy order. Yeah. We under the holy order. One nation, one power. The Church of Christ under the holy order. Yeah. We under the holy order. Yeah. We under the holy order. Yeah. We under the holy order, one nation, one power, the church of Christ under the holy order. We 
under the holy order. One nation, one power, the church of Christ under the holy order. We under the holy order. We under the holy order. We under the holy order. One nation, one power, the church of Christ under the holy order. Put this on first, bro. Compassion. Yeah. 
we teach faith. All right, Aaron. We love all God's children. We, we don't teach, teach hate. hate. We putting in work in these last, last days. And if you are going hard, the Messiah's name. Yeah, we teaching how to end it through the straight gate. Yeah, we teaching all nations. It just ain't about race. Hey, come on. We under the holy order. Yeah, come on. We under the holy order. Hey. We under the holy order. One nation, one power. Hey. Come on. We under the holy order. We under the holy order. We under that holy order. We under that holy order. One nation, one power. The church of Christ under the holy order. Stay firm, don't move, saints. Keep the faith. Keep growing in the spirit, church. Elevate. Ain't no plateauing. We growing every day. Get in the spirit of Paul and let's finish the race. We striving every day, trying to get it right. Right. And our main goal. Is eternal life. eternal life in the mansions of our Father for eternity. eternity. We will never die again. We'll live eternally. Eternally. We teaching love. love. We teach forgiveness. Yeah. We, we teach, teach repentance yeah. and baptism. So baptism. We teach compassion. Passion. We teach we faith. faith. We love all God's children. We, we don't teach hate. Oh, oh. Yeah. We under the holy order. Yeah. We under the holy order. We are not a holy order, one nation, one power. The church of Christ under the holy order. We are not a holy order. We are not a holy order. We are not a holy order, one nation, one power. The church of Christ under the holy order. Father, I pray right now for the moderators on First Fruits and the moderators. Oh, I yield bad Ephraim, that you give them strength to be able to finish this work for you and send people to the moon on a regular basis because we are at war with Satan. And Father, we know that these are robots. These are demons, AI. So Father, we ask that you give us strength to keep it moving and ignore the small things. So be it. Don't let what happened to me yesterday, we ain't gonna let it happen again. We're gonna put our foot to the gas pedal and we're gonna smash on Satan. We're going to smash on Satan. So don't be surprised with anything any one of these bots say on this channel. Just block them. Just block them. Send them to the moon. We ain't, we ain't dealing with them no more. We're going to make Satan have to find another strategy.
freezing up YouTube on, on first fruits. Them, them robots can't take it. Them robots can't take it. Shalom, brothers, and all my sisters. From the tribes of Israel, 
tribe of Judah. Get your pencil and get your paper, please. Is there anybody out there? Anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? Anybody out there that wanna hear the truth? From the beginning, high school, the history wasn't true. And they lied again. The white man too. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. See, they stole our nationality, lied about our history. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. That's why they want to be us. us we are the Jews. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. Hate us, but want to be like us. If that's not insanity, I don't know what is. Hate you, but want to be like us. you God's chosen people. Yeah. And if you're black and had it hard, it's struggling so hard, you wonder why it's gonna be like it's gonna be this way. But the most I say that we would suffer for turning our backs and breaking all of his commandments. Yeah, we got a chance to get it right. We're the Israelites. And that's the best news I have heard all my life. When I read We are the Jews, we are the Jews, we are the Jews. See, they stole our nationality, lied about our history. We are the Jews, we are the Jews, we are the Jews. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. Nationality to be. Come on out of here. Get your pencil and paper. We are the Jews. See your hands make holes in the Torah. 
foundation cause concrete don't fold and your words is life and the life is first as I live my life by the life your Torah's out in my mention my Torah talk yeah I live sit down pay attention then I write it all down I say like get up and live it you bless your prophet with double portions of your spirit through a world with Tony that you are the realest in I fear it Yahweh you the one provide for me so like my Please be that same rock with me. El Shaddai's what your name is. Help me to stay blameless. Your ways can't be judged, so I cut out complaining. Now, no love, I'm so grateful. It's power in your name, y'all. They shot at the brain, those balls down. Halil, y'all will not cry, y'all. Remember when they cried out. Tell everybody under my voice. Get a wonder chord, grab a show for us. Make a door for North and let sound dog. Praise his name, brothers and sisters. The most high God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He brought you from a mighty long way to get you ready for the second coming of his son. He is worthy of all the praise we can give him. He is worthy. He worthy, Johanna. He worthy. He worthy, Warren Buffalo and Brother Webb Yacht. He worthy. He worthy, Melverton. your pencils and get your paper. Let's eat. At this
this restaurant, all we serve is porterhouse steaks, ribs, guaranteed to eat good when you come on this channel. Get your pencil and get your paper. Welcome to the channel where you're going to get spiritually, physically, and mentally fed. Let's go. Put your seatbelt on. And let's go for a ride, shall we? We're going to start off today with a breakdown of Exodus 19 and 6. In Exodus 19 and 6, it was the Most High God's heart that we become a kingdom of priests. I'm going to slow down. That is way before Aaron and the Levitical priesthood. That priesthood was to be a Melchizedek priesthood alongside of the Aaronic priesthood. Why is that? Because all of us are not spiritual. And a lot of us choose to be carnal. Aaron was carnal. Carnal hand washings and a carnal law. Melchizedek is spiritual being born again so that you may receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, thereby keeping covenant with Christ and walking right in the eyes of God. So we're going to start today in Second Chronicles chapter 34 and verse 15. And then we're going to use and we're going to explain this book. When you open up the inside of this book, this is the sealed book of Moses. This is the book that was found under the altar written by Moses himself, given to us by God himself. And we're going to prove it. without any Gentile influence in it. No manipulation straight from Moses. Second Chronicles 34 and 15. Turn down your volume on your end because I'm about to Isaiah 58 1. Cry loud and spare not. And Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. And Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servant, servants, they do it. And they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law 
that he rent his clothes. At this time, they were practicing and keeping the Levitical priesthood. They thought they were doing everything that God would have them do until they found another book under the altar. And when they read it out loud in front of the king, the king rent his clothes. That was a sign of repentance in the old days. The next thing he would have done was to add dirt up on himself. When they found this book, they realized that they were not serving God as they should. Let's go now to the book, page 15. Written by Moses, the Levitical priest, and the Melchizedek priest. Verse 1, just listen. And now, behold, I desire to speak unto those who shall have the words of this book in their hands. Stop. Is this book in your hands? Put a number five in here. If you got right now, got this book in your hands. If you don't, we got a PDF where you can go get it in your hands. We opened up the book. As soon as we opened the book, Moses, they saying, I'm talking to the people that got this book in their hands. Once again, this is the book that was found under the altar. This is Hebrew business. There was no Greeks there. There was no Romans there. There were no Japanese or Chinese there. This is Hebrew Israelite tradition, customs. And now behold, I desire to speak unto those who shall have the words of this book in their hands. And after the Lord had stretched forth his arm upon the Gentiles in the latter days. He's doing that right now. For behold, there shall be many of the Gentiles and also of the Jews that shall not harden their hearts concerning the words of this book, which Nephi prophesied. When this book shall be revealed unto the children of men, and written unto the Gentiles, and sealed again to the Lord. Behold, but behold, many shall believe the words of this book, and rejoice, and know that it proceeded out of the hand of God. Stop. It proceeded what? Out of the hand of what? Not the Gentiles. God. This book. The creator of the universe. Let me give you some praise. Let me give you some praise for the way he got it to us. The way he evaded all of the I'm going to be nice today. The way he got around all of the intellectuals. 
They didn't get to sit down in the council. to the children of men. And before many generations pass, they will begin to coalesce in true knowledge. In what? True knowledge. In what? True knowledge. In what? True knowledge. In what? True knowledge. Give me Daniel 12 and 4. True knowledge. Where you get your knowledge from? Did you get your knowledge from the world or did you get your knowledge from God? Where did you get your knowledge from? Everything you think you know right now, where did you get it from? Did you get it from God or did you get it from the world? Because if you got it from the world, that knowledge not going to fit with God's knowledge. Daniel 12 and 4. That's God's knowledge. That's not the world's knowledge. So if you got the world's knowledge and you on this channel, you don't fit because the glove don't fit and you must acquit. <laughs> Coalesce in true knowledge. This God's knowledge. Daniel 12 and 4. And they will become a pure and pleasing people in the sight of the Lord upon all the inhabited earth. And it shall come to pass that the Lord God will again begin his work among all nations, tribes, tongues, and peoples to effect in these times already appointed by the Lord the full restoration of all things, the full restoration of all things the full restoration of all things what he's saying that he's gonna give his people the hebrew nation back all things that the gentiles stole from them in regards to the beginning of time to the end of time everything that the catholic church stole and hid under the Vatican, God just said, through this book, I'm going to give back the knowledge that was taken from my people. The full restoration of all things of which God spake by his servants, the prophets. Therefore, it is in these days that the Lord invites his people 
come to me, O you Gentiles, and I will show you things greater than these. Yea, the knowledge that is hidden, the knowledge that is hidden, the knowledge that is hidden. Gentiles, I want to show you knowledge that has been hidden, knowledge that has been hidden. Why was it hidden? So that your intellectual enemies couldn't get their hands on it, manipulate it, alter it, and pervert it. So now God want to show you knowledge that has been hidden. In Isaiah 29, 10 to 14, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4 to verse 8, hidden knowledge that's been hidden from the world. Yea, the knowledge that is hidden because of the hardness of their hearts are, he's saying, sin. Come to me, O house of Israel, and great things shall be revealed to you that the Father has reserved for you from the foundation of the world. Stop. Come to me, you Hebrews, and I will show you things that the Father has hid up for you from the foundation of the world. Stop. He's talking directly to the Hebrews and the Gentiles. He know what the Catholic Church did before they did it. Psalms 119.69. He knew that they was going to pervert the words of righteousness before they even did it. Isaiah 46 and 10. He declares the end from the beginning, from ancient time, things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. The God of the Hebrews already knew what General Vespasian and his son Titus was going to do. He already knew what Antiochus Epiphanes was going to do. He already knew what the Roman Catholic Church was going to do to your records. So what did he just say? I've got some records that I kept secret for you in the end. Come unto me, O you Gentiles. Come unto me, O you house of Israel. And great things shall be revealed to you that the Father has reserved for you from the foundation of the world and have not come to you because of your unbelief. Right here, you can put Romans 11:25. The reason it didn't come to us sooner is because we had to go through the 42 months in Revelations 11 and 2. We was held captive by the Gentiles under their spiritual and physical authority until 2019. 2019 is the year that the 42 months ended. Luke 21 and 20, 21, 20, 21, 22 tells you that we would remain until the time of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. That's why we didn't get this information because it wasn't for the Gentiles. It was to be given to the house of Israel because it's our records. He never gave the Gentiles our records. They stole them. So the father said, I got something for you that I kept, that I didn't release on the earth until the time of the end. 
house of Israel just for you. So that you can teach the rest of the world what I give you. Behold, the time has come for you to tear this veil that leads you to remain in this terrible state of iniquity and hardness of heart and blindness of mind for the words that come from this record. He talking to the house of Israel. For the words that come from this record, the sealed book of Mormon are like the hard tip of the mallet that shatters the hardness of the rock that covers your hearts, hardened by your traditions and as the fire of the refiner who refines and purifies the filth of his thoughts, stained by the precepts of men. Stop. What the most I just said. He said, I put a spirit on this record that when you read it, it's going to begin to transform your mind, spirit, and soul. That's what he just said. I put the, a spirit on this record that when you read it, the scales are going to fall from your eyes. In those days, the Lord would stretch out his hand a second time in order to reclaim his people. Stop. When we got this book, this is when God began to stretch forth his hand. Isaiah 11 and 11, a second time. 2019. In those days, talk about 2019. 2019 is also the end of the 400 year prophecy in Genesis 15, 13. In those days, the Lord will stretch out his hand a second time in order to reclaim his people who are of the house of Israel and to do a marvelous work and to do a marvelous work. This is your Isaiah 29, 14. And to do a marvelous work among them for the purpose of remembering the covenant which he has made with the sons of men and to fulfill the promises made to Nephi concerning the descendants of Lehi. Lehi. We're going we to keep reading. God's going to tell you what his real name was. His Lehi, his father, in order to recover the remnant of his seed. And so that the words of this book, written by the seed of Nephi, come to the seed of his father in the last day. Why did he say written? by the seed of Nephi, because it's the house of Israel. And to the knowledge of the house of Israel, that it come to the seed of his fathers in the last days, in the last days, in the last days, and to the knowledge, and to the knowledge, and to the knowledge, and to the knowledge of the house of Israel of the house of Israel, of the house of Israel, of the house of Israel. Who are we? We are the house of Israel. This record has come to the knowledge of the house of Israel, the 10 tribes. This is our DNA test. is our DNA test. 
You want to know who we are? We are the house of Israel. This Deep production. Put that in your crack pipe and smoke it. Saw 
when he was snatched to heavenly Zion. And it came to pass in the first days of the reign of Zedekiah. For how much Lehi returned from Babylon together with Gamaria, the son of Hilkiah, when they were jointly commissioned by the king of Judah to go to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And they took with them a letter from Jeremiah the prophet, destined for the elders, the priests, and the prophets, and all the people exiled, and all the people exiled in the land of Shinar, that the Lord appeared to him in a pillar of fire. And after that event, he was no longer called by the birth name Eliza. He was no longer called by the birth name Eliza. That's written in your Bible. But he became known. But he became known. But he became known by the name that God called him. Lehi, which corresponds to an abbreviation of Eliza, whose meaning is, whose meaning is by means of whom God restores. So God met Lehi and them on their journey to the land of Shinar to take a letter from Jeremiah the prophet to the priest and the prophets. Just like God met Moses on the top of the mountain. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changes not. So if he did it one time, he will do it two times. He can do it three times, four times, five times, and on, and on, and on, as he sees fit. So he visited Lehi and changed his name to Lehi from Eliza, which means by means of who God restores why did I read that first because I wanted to prove the book go now to page 118 chapter 16 we're going to get first hand knowledge from Moses himself. The story of Moses after freeing the Hebrews from slavery to Egypt. First hand account. No, no, no Gentile manipulation. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. You can't, see God's wisdom is, is smarter than the cunning of the devil. You see, see how that works? God's wisdom is greater than the cunning of the devil. Huh? Devil wiped out all your history. God gave it back. <laughs> The story of Moses after freeing the Hebrews from the slavery to Egypt. This lesson that I'm about to read is first hand knowledge from Moses himself. We ain't got to be guessing. 
We ain't got to be philosophizing. We're going to get it straight from the horse's mouth. How about that? You guys ready to get something straight from the horse's mouth for the first time in your life? Without Gentiles' hands all in it, screwing it up? Verse 1, straight from Moses' own mouth. It was then at the crossing of the sea under the cloud of the mighty God that the nation of Israel, together with the Egyptians who had forsaken their land to serve Christ, stopped. Your Bible, it don't go into detail like this, but we know that there were Egyptians that came out of ancient Egypt and forsook ancient Egypt because they wanted to be with us. Your Bible tell you that. Some of the Egyptians came out of ancient Egypt with us. Moses telling you what happened. Let's keep listening to Moses. It was then at the crossing of the sea under the cloud of the almighty God that the nation of Israel together with the Egyptians who had forsaken their land to serve, they got Jehovah in there. That's Christ. Moses knew Christ. To serve Christ, Christ is the God of this world. Underwent a baptismal process in me, Moses. They what? They first Corinthians 10, one through four. Moses telling you that all of our ancestors and the Egyptians went through a baptism process. Even with the Egyptians who had forsaken their land to serve Christ, underwent a baptismal process in me, Moses, through the cloud and of the sea, and became thus the children of the covenant. Stop. And became thus the children of the covenant. Is the Egyptians there? Right here, you can put Deuteronomy 29. Right here, you can put Deuteronomy 29. Under the laws which the Lord God would give to me for the purpose of teaching the children of Israel to live their commandments as being a united people which had just left behind the idolatry for the purpose of worshiping only the one true God under the unity of the church that had been organized on the day of Pentecost before Israel left Egypt, stop. When was the church organized? When was the church organized? On the day of what? Pentecost. Passover, forgive me. Passover. Passover, forgive me. Passover. On the day of Passover, when was the church 
organized. Not the Passover. Passover. All right. When do we get the knowledge of the Book of Mormon? March, April. When do we get the knowledge? I'm talking about the month. If I remember correctly, that was around March and April. In Acts chapter 2, when was the church organized? Were they together at the Passover and the Holy Ghost fell? You had Pentecost 50 days. Then you had what? Christ told him to what? Go up to the what? Upper room. All around the same time. Just pay attention. Is Moses. And being a united people which had just left behind the idolatry for the purpose of worshiping only the one true God under the unity of the church that had been organized on the day of Pentecost before Israel left Egypt regardless of where they were, they would all be one in the knowledge and subservience of the covenants made by Christ with the nation of Israel from before they left Egypt. Stop. They are your first church. They are your first church. The first church did not start in Antioch. Moses on mouth telling us Hebrews when God had him start the first church. Let's keep reading. as being a united people which had just left behind the idolatry for the purpose of worshiping only the one true God under the unity of the church that had been organized on the day of Passover before Israel left Egypt. Regardless of where they were, they would all be one in the knowledge 
and subservient to the covenants made by Christ with the nation of Israel from before they left Egypt when all shared the Passover 14 days after the first new moon appeared in the heavens which should be strictly observed according to the covenant established for liberation of the people of Israel. This month coming up represents what? The liberation of the children of Israel. What's up, Reg? That's what this represents. The Passover are being set free from ancient Egypt. Observe according to the commandment established for liberation of the people of Israel. Prefiguring then that the Israelite nation, that the what, what Moses call us, what Moses call us? What did Moses just call us? I want everybody to see that. What did Moses just call us? I want everybody to see that before I keep going. What did Moses just call us? The Israelite nation. When I rap about my sins, it's just a cry for help. I know God forgives, so why can't I forgive myself? So question perfect. That's what we are. Find myself. Be overthinking to the point where it declined my health. I'm stuck in my rejection. I feel so many attachments. But I had to put all that to sleep without no mattress. I switched up the flow, so many people started laughing. Won't see nobody laughing when Jesus come back to snatch us. Every day I'm tested and fearful if I'm go past. Now, I want you to see why it was so important in Exodus 19 and 6 for us to be a kingdom of priests because we were supposed to teach the world why don't you wake the hell up we were supposed to teach the whole world how to love one another how to serve the one true God and his son. And you wonder why you getting the hell beat out of you. You wondering why the police killing you according to Isaiah 42 and 22. According to Isaiah 51 and 20. Isaiah 65 and 15. Amos 3, 1 through 3. You trying to figure out why we getting hands put on us? According to Exodus 24, 6 to 8, we had the blood of the covenant sprinkled on us. Blood in, blood out. In Deuteronomy 32, starting around 19, we started serving devils. We didn't want to teach the world. We wanted to be hoes. We wanted to be just like the Gentile nations that we were supposed to teach. We wanted to hang on stripper poles. that the Israelite nation by observing the commandments given by me, Moses, would prefigure the church of the Lamb of God in all dispensation 
Stop. Somebody give me the, somebody Google the word prefigure. P-R-E-F-I-G-U-R-E. Remember, our Bible is full of symbolism, allegories, and parables. It's types all over it. Types all over it. Satan mad again. He don't want he want me to stop teaching. He messing with first fruits. Why are you mad, Satan? Why are you mad, Satan? Because I'm teaching my people. Prefigure something that is a sign of things to come. Put that back up three more times. Yeah. You see that, Melissa? You guys see? This is how you know this is the truth. People's internet crashing. First fruits crashing. Satan don't want you guys to see this. Truth coming from Moses himself. So the first church of the Lamb of God was a prefigure, a image of things that were going to come. It was a type. Prefigure to show, suggest, or announce by a antecedent a type. You guys, we're gonna have to fight this devil today. Let me finish. By observing the commandments given by me, Moses would prefigure the church of the Lamb of God in all dispensations. For how much this one Paschal day, talking about the Passover, for how much this one Paschal day to be observed strictly 14 days after the first new moon of the first month of it is to be kept in perpetuality, propriety among the people of the covenant because it represents the liberation of his people from the slavery of Egypt. What does it represent? This is why the Catholic Church gave you Easter. This is why they gave you Easter and did not acknowledge the Passover because it represented you guys' freedom from ancient Egypt. This is why the Christian church did not celebrate your freedom from ancient Egypt. They gave you Easter eggs and bunny rabbits. This is what Passover really represents. Our ancestors being free by God out of ancient Egypt. And now it's coming up again. 
again. represents the liberation of his people from slavery of Egypt. However, it is also the first day that God organized his church from the beginning of time. Stop. Now you got some higher knowledge. Now you got some higher knowledge. It also represents the first church that was started by God for us to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thousands of years before Christianity. So why did we need their God? Why did we need the Christian God? We didn't, and we still don't, and we don't need your God. Take your God and politely get the hell, get lost. Get lost, you bunch of damn Gentiles trying to tell us something. Get off this. You got to send them to the mold. Get these reprobates the hell out of here. You don't need your damn church. Throw your damn dirty church in the trash. Throw your wicked, boy-loving church in the trash. Go to Catholic Church and get your lower foot chakra massage. You bunch of homorphodites. Trying to tell us about God. It's in our DNA. Wasn't no damn Europeans here at this time. Wasn't no Chinese here. Wasn't no Japanese here at this time. It was the Hebrews and the Egyptians. And the Egyptians at this time were blacker than a skillet. Wasn't no white-skinned Egyptians. Egyptians at this time were blacker than midnight. They were darker than under the bed. <laughs> there was no light-skinned Egyptians at this time in history. Sorry, there was no Alexander out there raping to make them people. Wasn't no Alexander on the scene. Wasn't no Antiochus Epiphany. Wasn't no Plutolemies. So everybody at this time was black as skillets. I want to say to all of the Gentiles on this channel that have been grafted in with us, praise ye the Lord, we getting back our history from our own people, Moses. This is higher knowledge. Let's continue. So the Passover represents 
our freedom from ancient Egypt. It also represents the first Hebrew church to ever be established on planet Earth. Let me say that again. I'm reading from Moses himself telling us what God had him do when we came out of ancient Egypt. Some of the Egyptians came out with us. And God had Moses organize the first church where your Bible tell you in the wilderness. The church, what did Moses call it? The church of the Lamb of God. Let that let me let that marinate. I shared with you guys before, and I'm gonna share it with you again. Every man or woman that's ordained in the heavenly realm as a prophet knew Christ. Why? Isaiah 9 and 6. The government was on his shoulders. He is the one that personally ordains prophets. Moses said, Exodus 19 and 6. Let's look at it. Now you're going to understand Exodus 19 and 6. This is before Aaron. And I'm going to show you why you got given Aaron. The Most High God, Exodus 19 and 6. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Under what? The church of the Lamb of God, which is what? The Melchizedek priesthood. Genesis 14, 18. Let's keep reading. So the Passover, not just is a remembrance of our ancestors being freed from ancient Egypt. It's also a, rem a reminder of the first church ever organized by God when our ancestors came out of ancient Egypt called the church of the Lamb of God. It would prefigure the church of the Lamb of God in all dispensations. For how much this one Paschal day to be observed strictly 14 days after the first new bowl of the first month of bed is to be kept in perpetuity 
among the people of the covenant. The people of the covenant. Right here, you put Deuteronomy 29. Because it represents the liberation of his people from the slavery of Egypt. However, it also, however, it also, however, it also, the first day that God organized his church from the beginning of time. And only on this day does God redeem it. <laughs> church, when was we redeemed? <laughs> when was we redeemed back in 2019, baby? In April. The timeline. When did he redeem his church of the Lamb of God under the Melchizedek order? And only on this day, and only on this day, and only on this day, does God redeem it whenever necessary in every predetermined time by him before the foundation of the world. What? A Hebrew church of the Lamb of God that loves everybody, that teaches everybody higher knowledge about the God from whom they love. That's our job. So the first church was not started in Antioch. Trying to get it right, right, and our main goal, goal is, 
is eternal life, eternal life. In the mansions of our Father for eternity, eternity. We will never die again. We'll live eternally, eternally. We teach in love, love. We teach forgiveness. Yeah. We teach repentance yeah. and baptism. baptism. We teach compassion. Passion. We teach we faith. faith. We love all God's children. We, we don't teach hate. Yeah. We under the holy order. Yeah. We under the holy order. Verse 3, now we know that this church that God ordained is a Hebrew church. Give me seal potion, 88 and 45. All other churches have been organized on earth by men. We are the Israelite nation. Only ones that can teach like this. Where are all the other teachers at? And the false prophet is all of the organized religions upon the earth that have been organized by the hand of man that they might subject the souls of the children of God to their pretended precepts and commandments, which do not create peace and happiness, but strife and misery among all the nations of the earth. That's what religion has done to us. It separated us. It divided us by race, class, all over the world. Muslims don't like Christians. Christians don't like Muslims. Bat First Baptists don't like Second Baptists. Second Baptists don't like Third Baptists. Pentecostals don't like Apostolic. But they all following the same God. That should make your head hurt. That's how you know it's witchcraft involved. They all trying to reach the same God, but they don't like each other. They all believe that they're better than each other. That's witchcraft. Why am I going to be mad at another man that's trying to find and talk to the same God, because there's only one, that I'm trying to talk to? That's another spirit. That spirit is a spirit of division, anger, and Satan playing on your egos. You notice? that that's the American way to be better than somebody else, make you feel good. That's why people that got money in these cities, they all show off when they're driving down the road in their car. You guys remember that? It was a song back in the days called Keeping Up With The Joneses. That's a spirit that Satan's attacks a man and a woman's ego and it make you feel better than other people. That's an ego trip. You're not better than other people. You're still paying the same mortgages, buying the same high price groceries, paying for the same high price gasoline. You, you all the same, you're in the same boat. You just Satan made you think that you was better than somebody else because you drive a better car. No, you ain't better than nobody else. You got a higher payment. You got a higher car payment and you got your, 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 your car insurance is double what the poor man's is. You in worse shape. They got you over a barrel and you don't even know it. So we all the same. We in the same boat under the hand, trying to stay from out under the hand of Satan. So let's keep going. This is higher knowledge. This, talking about the church, organized by God on the Passover. This being the terms predetermined by God to organize his church properly on the face of the earth, just as it occurred 
on the day of the first Passover observed by the Hebrews in Egypt. Stop. The first Passover happened where? Moses telling us, where did the first Passover happen? In Egypt. On the 14th day of the month of death. However, the day when God established his church in the days of Adam. Stop. Boy, I love my ancestors. <laughs> I love God. Now we're going all the way back to Adam. The first church. Now we're going back to Adam. This is higher knowledge. You got to throw away what you learned in the church. Because, baby, this is higher knowledge. You can't fix your lips and say, but, but, because everything you've been taught is a lie. Matter of fact, you haven't been taught none of this. You know nothing about Moses' life on earth. You get little clips in the Bible, and it's vague. And get in it. See, they did the Bible vague, so when you read it, you got to philosophize. You got to try to figure out in your mind what it's saying. God, did, God is not the author of confusion. He didn't give it to you like that. So watch. However, the day when God established his church in the days of Adam, he set a fixed and unchangeable day for the children of men, regardless of the possession of the moon. Stop. Here we go. Now we're going into the Enoch calendar. See how it started off? You used to use the moon. Now he gave you a fixed what? Day. First Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Now he gave you the 14th day of that month. A fixed day. Every year people come on this channel and they look at our calendar and they think we don't know what we're doing we know what we're doing it's a fixed day now he gave you all all we doing now is following in the footsteps of our ancestors we don't need no calculator regardless of the possession of the moon in the heaven to which he set out in all ages to properly organize and structure his church on earth and which by chance to occur on the 14th day of the lunar calendar among the people of Israel in Egypt. Did they have a lunar calendar back then? Brothers and sisters, the original calendar is in the book of Enoch. There go your calendar. If you want the calendar, matter of fact, I think if they don't hurry them, take it down. <laughs> because they watching me so close. You get, I think you can Google the Hebrew calendar and Google will give you the Enochian calendar. Ask, ask Google, when, what calendar did the Hebrews follow? And it should, it should come up. It should come up with, and it'll tell you that the Hebrews followed the Enochian calendar and until they were Hellenized 
by the Greeks and the Romans. That's when the calendar, we started keeping these other calendars. To properly organize and structure his church on the earth and which by chance to occur on the 14th day of that calendar among the people of Israel in Egypt, making this day for it to be remembered for they of generation after generation, but which for God does not change the fixed day decreed by him and is only begotten before the foundation of the world and for all eternity. So the Passover going to fall on the same Sabbath day. Because when God gives you a fixed day, it's from Sabbath to Sabbath. So the Passover going to land on the what? Pass on the, on the Sabbath. That's why it said 14th day. He go from Sabbath to Sabbath. He work in sevens. Seven day, there you go. If therefore a church is organized to the Lord on a day other than this day, then this will serve as a sign for you to know that this church does not proceed from the hand of God. Stop. See what they're hiding from you? God is the same yesterday today and forever. What are we learning? We learning that every church that God sets on the earth starts on the Passover, not Easter. He said to the Hebrews, this is how you can know that these churches have not been started by God. If therefore a church is organized to the Lord on a day other than this day, then this will serve as a sign for you to know that this church does not proceed from the hand of God and that he will never lay his foundations on another day beyond from the one who was predetermined from the beginning of all times. Stop. So now, so now, so now, let's think for just a second. Now, let's go into the book of Corinthians and let's get now the true meaning of the foundation that Christ laid that no other man can lay. Now we're going to get the proper understanding of that passage in the Bible. Christ laid the foundation. Here it is right here. The 14th, the Passover. For other foundation can no man lay that than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's right. So the foundation that Christ laid was laid when we came out of ancient Egypt. 
the first church of the Lamb of God started 14 days after the month of Abib. And from that time forward, every one of God's churches are started on the Passover. That's where you get Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. So Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, if you really sit down and read it, there ain't no chapter 2. It's still chapter 1. Why? You still It's still telling you the same story. That's another thing I'll teach you guys at a later date. He gave us fixed days. You don't need to follow the moon no more. But go ahead. You want to follow the moon? Go ahead. You ain't got to. Because he gave you the first, he gave you the 14 days. Even when you read the book of Leviticus. It's in there. It's a fi Why would he give you a fixed day and then you got to go calculate? That because you don't understand the scriptures. Let me read that again. Regardless, this is Moses talking. Regardless of the possession of the moon in the heavens to which he set out in all ages to properly organize and structure his church on earth and which by chance to occur on the 14th day. We know there ain't no lunar calendar because the lunar calendar is new. Among the people of Israel in Egypt, making this day for it to be remembered for they of generation after generation but which for God does not change the fixed day decreed by him and his only begotten before the foundation of the world and for all eternity. If therefore a church is organized to the Lord on a day other than this day, then this will serve as a sign for you to know that this church does not proceed from the hand of God and that he will never lay his foundations on another day beyond from the one who was predetermined from the beginning of all times. It happened then over time because of the murmuring of all the congregation of Israel, that the disbelief of the people displeased the Lord in view of all that he had done hitherto. And for this reason, the Lord allowed our enemies to make war against us, to once again manifest to the people of Israel from whence their strength and their help came. Stop. Stop. God allowed our enemies to make war against us when we go into sin so that we would repent and return and understand that our strength is in our God. Our strength is in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Hebrews. Our help comes from the Lord. Yes, it does. 
our help, our strength comes from the Lord. right now. I'm just bathing in it. I'm just sitting in it. Power of God all over me. Get out, devil, in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out! enemies in America did everything possible for us not to return to our God because they understand that our help and our strength comes from our God. So in order for the other nations to have their way with us and do to us whatever they want to do, they had to keep us in sin, separated from the God of our ancestors. That's why they organized all these religions, Satan did, on the earth, to keep us from making it back to where we are now. I'm going to read verse 5 again because a lot of you guys need to understand why we are in the condition we are in. And baby, you need to know that our God has protection about us right now. Why? Because we've repented. We live in right. We walk in right. We confess in our sins. And we don't hang out with sinners. We separated ourselves. We are set apart. Now, it's a dangerous thing to mess with one of God's children. Verse 5 again. It happened then over time because of the murmurings of all the congregation of Israel that the disbelief of the people displeased the Lord in view of all that he had done hitherto. And for this reason, the Lord allowed our enemies to make war against us to once again manifest to the people of Israel from whence their strength and their help came. And it came to pass in the land of Rephidim, that the Amalekites encamped about to attack the children of Israel. In view of this, I, Moses, called Joshua, and I commanded that he chose some men for the battle against the Amalekites. For how much I said to Joshua, that I would be on the top of the hill according to the command that God had given me. 
in which I would hold the rod of the Most High in my two hands when my arms would be in the high. Stop. I'm going to slow down. What's in his hand? What's in his hand? The rod. All right. Now we got to get the meaning of that rod that's in Moses' hand. It's the same rod in Revelations 12 and 5 that Christ was born with. In Revelation 12, 5, it tells you that Christ was born with a rod in his hand. Remember, Moses was a type of Christ. So what's in his hand? A rod. Give me seal version 68 and 45. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now we're going to get the definition of the rod of iron out of the book of the seven seals. What are we doing? We letting God explain everything. Now, I, Moroni, have given unto you an explanation of these things already in this record. Nevertheless, I have been commanded to give unto you more information concerning these times of the Lord, so that you of the latter days might see the words of John being fulfilled as they are given. Is lagging? Now the rod of iron of which John had written is the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's the rod of iron of which John had written in Revelation 12, 5? What's the rod of iron? It is the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's in Moses' hand? The rod of iron, which is what? Represent symbology. Symbolism. Moses got the rod of iron in his hand. He holding it up in the air. Symbolism. God told him to go to the top of the hill according to the command that God had given me in which I would hold the rod of the most high in my two hands while my arm will be in the high. And thus says the Lord to me, just as I live, if you keep your arms outstretched over your head, so shall thy victory be against the Amalekites tomorrow. What he's telling? What he's telling? If you keep your what? Hands up in the air to me. So his hands like this. What is that? If you keep your hand 
up in the air. I'm going to give you the victory over your enemies. I don't think nobody on here caught that. I don't think you caught that. I don't think you caught that. I'm going to let that marinate. I don't think you caught that. What are you telling you? This really happened, but it's also symbolism. What God telling you, where are you telling you your victory at? Where your victory at over your enemies? Where you where you gonna get the victory? In your praise, in your worship. Verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one step 
and write upon it for Jonah and for the children of Israel, his companion. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companion. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in my hand. The stick also represents the records because that's what the fullness of the gospel is. It's the record of the 10 tribes and Judah, Benjamin, and Levi being put together into one. That's how you get the fullness of the gospel. I could not bear to remain for a long time with my arms outstretched over my head with that heavy stick in my hands. And as soon as I lowered my arms to rest, Amalek was immediately to take over the battle. But when I lifted up the rod, Israel prevailed against the Amalekites. When I lifted up the rod, Israel prevailed against their enemies. And this, Aaron and her in, interrupted me saying, it is seen by us that your hands, Moses, are too heavy to keep your arms up, your arms raised high. Please let us help you. There go Brother Omar on the land. There go Brother Stanley, Brother Mike, Hugh, and the rest of them that was here last night. The council. There you guys go. Aaron and her is those around me Brother Ty, all of you that want to help. Can't do it all on your own, Elder. Let us help you. But behold, it had not been said by God that I might have help. And so I rebuked them at first. But there came a time when I could no longer raise my hand. They go, yah, yah. They go, all the moderators. Thank you, Media Truth. Thank you, D. Thank you, Daphne. Thank all of you. I want to thank everybody that's helping me. Because I can't do it by myself.
jumped off the pages and hit my spirit. Thank you guys. From the bottom of my heart, thank all of you. But there came a time when I could no longer raise my hands to the top and my legs could no longer stand when Aaron and her came to sustain me and they took a stone and put it under me and Aaron and her maintained my hands raised high Aaron on the right side and her on the left side. And so my hand stood firm until sundown. As a result, Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And it came to pass when Jethro, my father-in-law, came to me. Moses and my sons and my wife Zipporah in the wilderness to the mountain of God where he was in camp and as soon as I saw them I immediately went to meet my father-in-law and bowed and kissed him and after asking each other about their well-being we went into my tent now a lot of you guys don't know but moses received the melchizedek priesthood from his father-in-law jethro that's why moses bowed to jethro because jethro was also a melchizedek high priest so moses bowed to his father-in-law jethro who anointed him and brought him into the Melchizedek order. So he showed him respect and bowed and kissed him. And after asking each other about their well-being, we went into my tent where I told my father-in-law what Christ had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians because of Israel and all the tribulations that passed in the way and how the Lord delivered us out of the hand of Amalek with the help of Aaron and her. And it came to pass upon my resistance to accept the help of Aaron and her that the Lord said to me the next day, it is not good that I should stand alone in the presidency of church of my firstborn for how much you need support, just as I showed you in the battle of Rephidim when Aaron and her helped you with high hands. Is history repeating itself? I want to thank everybody that's putting stuff on TikTok. I'm thanking all of you. I can't do this by myself. I need your help.
verse 14. Behold now, I'll let you know, Moses, that there shall be no victory if you had not allowed Aaron and her to sustain you. At that moment, He's talking to me, man. Behold now, I'll let you know, Moses, that there would be no victory if you had not allowed Aaron and her to sustain you. At that moment, in a similar way, I tell you, behold, the time has come for you to organize my church according to the old order of Enoch, which has been in existence since the days of Adam. For how much my gospel is ever the same, being eternal and unchanging. Stop. The gospel is what? The gospel is what? The gospel is eternal. It's older than the Levitical priesthood. You ain't stoning nobody no more. That's done away with. What you got now? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. It's eternal. Let's prove it. Christ is prophesied that Christ would utter things that were hidden from the foundation of the world. That he would open his mouth in parables and utter things that were hidden from the foundation of the world. What is that? The gospel. It's eternal. It's what the angels in heaven keep. It's the law of heaven. That's why he said, pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. The gospel is what the angels keep in the heavenly realm. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. The gospel. the book of Ecclesiastes say that there's nothing new under the sun. That which was is that which shall be the gospel. Now, here you are on the earth being given the gospel in establishing the kingdom of God on earth. When Christ comes, you'll be ready to walk among angels because they'll be keeping the same gospel that you are now keeping. There'll be no stoning. There'll be no erring in the kingdom that's coming. It's going to be love. What you learning how to do right now. So God told Moses, you're going to reestablish the church that I gave to Enoch. My church 
according to the order of Enoch, which has been in existence since the days of Adam. For how much my gospel is ever the same, being eternal and unchanging, my gospel, therefore, must contain in itself all the offices of my priesthood, according to the old order of Enoch, even as I will make thee known through my servant, Raul, the father-in-law, thy father-in-law, and Jethro, when he heard these words of mine, behold, rejoice for all of the good that the Lord had done to Israel and said, blessed be the Lord who delivered you from the hands of the Egyptians and from the hand of Pharaoh. And behold, that now I know that the Lord is greater than all the gods. For in that in which the Egyptians exalted their gods, the Lord overcame. And it came to pass on the morrow that my father-in-law saw all that I did unto the people and said, Behold, it is not good for you to continue like this, but surely you must do as God has revealed to you. But hearken unto the voice of him whom God had appointed thee to hear, and I will counsel thee, and God shall be with thee. Stop. Who did God put in Moses' life for Moses to listen to? Jethro, the high priest. He said, come here, my son in law, sit down. It's not good for you to continue like this by yourself. But you, the leader of the people before God, and teach them the statutes and the laws of their church, the gospel, and make known unto them the way in which they should walk and the work which they ought to do. And of thy people, Moses, seek out able men, fearful of God, men that cherishes the truth, who hate covetousness, and designate them under your hands to office of elder, each according to what the Spirit of God shall direct they stop i'm going to do this live i hear you father father every man that's on the council I now pray that every one of them will be made elders in the church of the Lamb of God. I pray right now over each and every one of them that sit on the council. I pray for Brother Omar. I pray the eldership over the lives of those that are on the land. I pray for Brother Mike out of Oklahoma. All of those that are helping on the land. Today, I make them all elders. LaFrance, I pray that your eldership will come on their heads and that a greater anointing of leadership will come in their lives. So be it.
God talking to me. And designate them under your hand to offices of elder, each according to what the Spirit of God shall direct thee. You guys already being directed by the Spirit of God because you're doing what he wants you to do. And thou shalt give him functions in the physical administration of the people of God through the lesser priesthood. We don't operate no more through the lesser priesthood. And give the possessions of spiritual administration of the congregation of Israel through the greater priesthood, the Melchizedek order. And since the people are very numerous, appoint officers in the priesthood of Melchizedek and take care spiritually of the congregation which you will call of rulers. Yea, rulers of a thousand, rulers of a hundred, rulers of fifty, and rulers of ten, that they may judge this people at all times. There go my counsel. Thank you, brothers, that you may judge this people at all times. And let me let everybody on the land know, you will submit to this council. Whether you, if you don't like it, you better take it up with God You will submit to this council. Judge this people at all times, but every serious cause bring to you. But every Real serious cause, counsel, bring it to me. In every little cause, they will judge according to the knowledge that they will obtain through you. And it came to pass that I, Moses, did all that my father-in-law had said, beginning with him, when I ordained him to the position of patriarch, for he was already high priest. After ordaining him to the patriarchal office, I summoned Aaron as my immediate counselor, because he stood beside me in the battle of Amalek. All right, Father. Father, I now pray for Elder Kudash. And I anoint Elder Kudash afresh by faith under the Melchizedek order to be my counselor next to me. Boy, is he setting it in order or what? I had no idea this was even in here. And it came to pass that I, Moses, did all that my father-in-law had said, beginning with him, when I ordained him to the possession of patriarch. For he was already high priest after ordaining him to the patriarch office. I summoned Aaron as my immediate counselor because he stood beside me in the battle of Amalek. That's what Elder Quadash has been doing. Standing beside me and putting in work for the Lord God. Holding one of my arms and as so as I call a second counselor 
in the presidency of the Church of the Lamb, her for remaining on my left, for remaining on my left. Who is this to me that remain on my left? Father, I pray for Elder Tom, who remain also at my side. I make Brother Tom my counselor on the left. Representing thus each in his calling, my right arm and my left arm, in the spiritual administration of the covenant people. Hold on. Man! with Tom and Stanley and them got going. I had no idea I'd be doing this today. We at the end. The church had to be set in order before Christ returned. chosen many capable men from all over Israel and I set them for heads over the people rulers rulers one of a thousand rulers of hundreds thank God I ain't got that many rulers of fifty and rulers of ten and they judge the people in small things according to the law of God but the great ones left for me, Moses, to judge. I appointed 12 apostles after me. What? I appointed 12 apostles after me, after whom I said to the promised land to return to the covenant people with glad tidings. Moses did what? He sent 12 apostles to the promised land to return to the covenant people with glad tidings. I also appointed 70 according to the ancient order established by God from the beginning of the world in the likeness of the heavenly order. Stop! Oh, we just got higher knowledge of what the 70 represent. Boy, I tell you, I'm so excited. I'm on fire right now. I'm sitting in the anointing. Hey! About to run out this house. Jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in my bone. Let me read that again. Now we know what the 70 represent. I appointed 12 apostles after it, whom I sent to the promised land to return to the covenant people, which had glad tidings 
I also appointed 70 according to the ancient order established by God from the beginning of the world in the likeness of the heavenly order in common accord with the church of the firstborn. And so I instituted among the people of Israel in my day the church of the Lamb of God with all their offices properly organized. Moses organized the church of the Lamb of God after the order of Enoch. Now you know what was on those two tablets when he first came down the mountain before he threw them and broke them and had to go back and get the Ten Commandments. Now you know it was the gospel. I told you that's what's in the Ark of the Covenant. The shoe bread represents the body of Christ. What else is in there? The two tablets, not the Ten Commandments. This, this is a joyful time for me, and it's also a sad time. Why? So many of our people will never obtain this knowledge. Now, you can probably understand why it was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness sake. Give me Genesis 14 and 18. Now you are gonna understand. Melchizedek greeted Abram after the battle of the kings and he brought forth bread and wine. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the Most High God. There go the body and the blood of Christ in symbolism according to 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, Abraham sat down with Melchizedek, and what did they do? They took communion. See, righteousness was set in the earth way before Jesus Christ came. It had to be from the spirit world into the natural world before Christ came. What did the bread represent? His body that shall be broken for you. His death. What did the wine represent? His blood that shall be shed for you. What was that? The Melchizedek order. Abraham had to repent and be water baptized to enter into the church of the Lamb of God. I can't help it if our intellectual enemies hid all of this information, but now God has given it back. As I said before, the Bible says, Christ said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. And it is. Now, 
the whole Bible. The whole Bible. Give me Proverbs 9 5. Remember now, you have knowledge of what the bread and the wine represent. Ecclesiastes 9 7. So the bread and the wine all over your Bible is symbolism. Everybody knew about Christ. That's why they took the bread and the wine. That's why when King David and his men were hungry and they went into the temple they ate the shoe bread. Go and me. Page 625 in the sealed portion. Chapter 7 and verse number 26. Now, I mourn, do not know what happened among the Lamanites from the time that they fled from before the Nephites went into the wilderness to the time that Ammon traveled among them in the land of Lehi Nephi. For behold, they did not keep records according to the commandments that Nephi had received from the Lord. Nevertheless, I know that they became a wild and a ferocious people who despised the Nephites and tried many times and tried many times to war against them only to be driven back and slain. And they were taught by their families that Nephi had stolen their authority and had driven them out of the land of their inheritance, which was the most choice land in all the land round about and was promised to their fathers, the elders, brothers of Nephi. And thus they did harbor an exceeding hatred for the Nephites. And instead of becoming and industrious, hardworking people, the Lamanites, hunted wild beasts in the wilderness and depended on plunder to support them in their needs. And it came to pass that the Nephites began to prosper exceedingly throughout the land. And they began to build machines of all manner of devices to help them produce their food. Stop! They begin to build what? They go your farm equipment. In the Americas, thousands of years before the Europeans landed,
you know, what you call Tartaria. Here you go. They begin to build machines and all manner of devices to help them produce their food and manufacture their clothes. What? Manufacturing their clothes and provide them with many precious things and their armies grew and became strong in their weaponry in so much that there was no threat from the Lamanites again. And Nephi instructed his people to build a house of God like unto the temple of old. And this he did that he might keep the people in remembrance of the law of Moses, which they had covenanted to be to honor and obey. Stop. What they build, this is in the Book of Mormon. What they build, a temple of Solomon. Where in Mexico? Google it. Google it. You can Google it. Ask Google. Temple of Solomon. Replica Temple of Solomon in Mexico. Watch. It's there. It's going to show up. You're going to fall out your chair. In the Book of Mormon, he said, yeah, we built it, but we couldn't build it just like Solomon built it because we didn't have all that gold and fancy stuff that Solomon had. But it is a replica of the Temple of Solomon in Mexico. And Nephi was the high priest, having been ordained by his father, Lehi, who had received his authority from the church at Jerusalem at the time when he was a member of the high priesthood. Stop. Now we put Lehi in ancient Jerusalem as a high priest. Before God changed his name. In ancient Jerusalem, his name was Elisa. High priest. And Nephi was the high priest having been ordained by his father, Lehi, who had received his authority from the church at Jerusalem at the time when he was a member of the high priesthood. And according to the law of Moses, this priesthood was passed down from generation to generation by way of a sacred anointing, which is the ordination that Lehi received from his father, Jeshurun. And according to this law of Moses, only the Lord can give or take away the authority of this priesthood, the authority of which can be bestowed upon men, whether they are righteous or wicked. Nevertheless, this power can only be controlled and granted to the bearer upon the principles of righteousness. Behold, though there have been many wicked men who have had the authority of the priesthood bestowed upon them, none of these had the power associated with this authority, which power can only come from God and only by the authority of tradition, or in other words, the lineage of the priesthood, can the ordinances of the law of Moses be performed and sanctioned by the church 
of God. May the Most High God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Now, I'll answer some questions, but we always use the Bible to answer the questions. We never give you our own opinion, what we think or what we feel. We'll answer your questions with scripture. First Thessalonians 521. Now everything I just shared and said did not come from me. It came from God's word. And we've been so manipulated by philosophy and slick talkers that for some reason, we don't know how to just believe the word of God. This is the only channel that you're going to get all of the word of God. That way it's self-explanatory. You shouldn't have no questions. The only reason you have questions is because your computer has been defiled with false knowledge. So now you will have to do what I did. Yes, I was a Christian pastor. God had to take my mind, erase everything I thought I knew, all of that studying under the Christian church as a pastor and then later as an evangelist. He told me I had to wipe my mind clean and be taught again. In 2019, he began to teach us. In 2019, he began to show us. And we're still being taught. That's the key. Always be teachable and God will teach you. When you get yourself to a place where you think you know something, I'm going to tell you right now, that's when you don't know. Because I don't know. In every one of these records, you can read them. And parts of them are still sealed. So you'll read it. And this is what happened to you when you used to read the Bible. Remember you used to read the Bible and then you would go back and read the Bible and then you would see something that you didn't see before? That's because what you read before was still spiritually sealed. So then when you read it again another time, you seen something that you didn't see before. That's because God had just unsealed it. Are you with me? So these records that we are going over and reading that God gave us, we can eat on these records until the second coming of Christ. Because there's always going to be something in here that we've already read, but it was sealed. So then we go back and read it again, like what I just read today. I didn't know that was in there. I didn't read this book so much. Look. I done read this book so much it's falling apart.
but every time I go in it, I've learned something that I didn't see before. And that's what we just did today. Now I understand why he put the spirit on Stanley to organize the council. Now I understand. I, I seen the spirit on him of urgency that we had to do this. But I was just sitting back waiting for God to give me the confirmation. And he gave it to me today. So now we have the land in order. So now watch this. We in order for a reason. Why today? Because more people coming. He doesn't do anything like this unless something else is coming. So he preparing us for what's coming. More people. This is not some racist movement. We love everybody. I wasn't sent to separate the people. I was sent by God to bring his elect, his chosen, back home to him. By the spirit, not by head knowledge, but by the spirit of God. All over the world. Now you have people all over the world. Somebody give me Isaiah 29 and 6. People are hearing sounds in the sky. Let's see if it's in the Bible. So now you seeing people everywhere screaming and hollering, Jesus coming back. But they haven't dreams. But all we got to do is pay attention to the military movements, the military build up. Thou shall be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and with great, what? Noise. Are noises coming from this God? Are noises coming from the sky. Volcanoes are the sign of God's judgment in the earth. That's why people, are more people, are going to have more dreams of the second coming of Christ. What is he doing? He's trying to snap some people out of their sleep. You got military in Texas. That didn't wake you up. You got military under the subway checking bags. Are the American people the enemy? Or is it the terrorists? Because it looked like to me that the American people are the enemy. Because they're misinterpreting the Bible. That's easy. Everybody, a lot of people misinterpreting the Bible. Give me Hebrews 10, 26. What they're doing and what they have done to you guys is they manipulated you with the word of God. If Jesus, watch this. If Jesus died for my sins, why did I have to go to the waters of baptism and confess my sins? For if we will sin willfully, after that, 
we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Stop. I still can sin and still can break the law. So if Jesus died for my sins, why am I still 1 John 1, 7 through 9, have to confess my sins? It don't add up, does it? No, because the Bible says in the book of Galatians that Christ was hung on a tree because he became a curse for us. I'm going to teach you right now. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, that's the law, Proverbs 6.23, we have fellowship one with another because we all agree. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. See that? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, give me the book of Galatians. Let me show you what Jesus died for. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is every one that hangeth on a tree. Christ became a curse for us. He redeemed us from the curses of the law. Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting at verse 15 to verse 68, are the curses. Somebody give me Deuteronomy 28, 15. We're just going to follow the Bible. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Cursed is everyone that hangeth from a tree. So Christ became a curse while he was hanging on the tree or the cross. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, what I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Stop. Now you got to read the curses so that you can see what curses came up on the children of Israel. Christ died to break those curses. In John chapter 3, he told Nicodemus, just like the serpent was lifted up on the pole, even so must the Son of God be lifted up. That's right. That's grace. He became a curse for us. We didn't have to do nothing. And as Moses lift, was lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Where was the serpent put on the pole? Numbers chapter 23. Who was there? The children of Israel. Who did he become a curse for? The people. In Deuteronomy 28. 15 to 68. He broke that curse. Give me Acts 10, and I think it's 36, where he came, Jesus Christ came preaching peace. Give me that, preaching peace unto the children of Israel. Watch. Watch. He came to make peace between God 
and the children of Israel. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Why? They had the curses on. Christ became a curse for them, thereby bringing in peace. To who? The children of Israel. Waving a white flag, telling the children of Israel that now they can come back to the God of their ancestors. So the Pharisees and the scribes, when they set up the church of God in ancient Jerusalem, they was keeping Aaron, sacrificing of animals, but they were still under the curses. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, see that? Who was in the wilderness? The children of Israel. So Christ hanging on the cross or the tree was a type of the serpent on the pole. But now you understand Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Now you're going to understand Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Why? The children of Israel were just chosen to teach the rest of the world. They was the one in Exodus 24, 6 through 8 that had the blood of the covenant sprinkled on them. They were supposed to be the teachers of the earth. So when Christ came, he came back to raise up the original teachers. These 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and, in, and into any of the city of the Samaritans, enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why? Those are the ones he became a curse for hanging on the tree. And by him becoming a curse for us, it opened the door for the Gentiles to come in. And Moses took half of the blood and put it on a basin, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Who there? Who he putting the blood on? This is the Melchizedek order. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord had said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant. That is the Melchizedek priesthood. You don't do that under Aaron, which the Lord had made with you concerning these words. What words? Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 68. What did they say? All this you have said, we will do. And we didn't do it. So what did I read earlier? About when we go into sin, our God brings our enemy against us to make us remember that he is our strength and our savior. So now the Gentiles are coming in. Now you being grafted in. Now give me Ezekiel 47 and 20. Now you have the new Jerusalem in the book of Revelations. And it got the name of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel on New, Jer New Jerusalem. Three on the east, three on the west, three on the north, three on the south. Where do the Gentiles come in? Right here. The west side also shall be the great sea from the border till a man come over against Hamath. This is the west side. Watch. I'm showing you your Bible, letting your Bible speak without any philosophy. So shall you divide this land 
unto you according to the tribes of Israel, just like New Jerusalem in the book of Revelation. And it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and to the strangers that shall join among you, which shall be get children among you, and they shall be unto you as one born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have an inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger shall join it, there shall you give him his inheritance, says the Lord. Graft it in. There go your Romans chapter 11. The Gentiles have been grafted in to the house of Israel. And whatever tribe they come in under, that's the gate they're going to go in in Revelations. They're going in, grafted in to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's what your Bible said, not me. So now, when you go down to the waters of baptism, you confess the sins of your forefathers and your sins. You come up out of the water. That is a demonstration of faith. You did an outward demonstration that Christ died, and when you come back up out the water, that he rose again. And then you make a covenant when you do that by faith. And now you have become, in God's eyes, the righteousness of God. Nobody in the whole Bible ever becomes righteous without water baptism. That's why Christ said to John the Baptist, you must baptize me so that I can fulfill all righteousness. The children of Israel, when they went through the Red Sea and the cloud were baptized. Under what? Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. This ministry has been chosen by God to go toe to toe with Lucifer. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What Moses just got done telling us. And we're all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink of that same spiritual drink for that drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was who? Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me that cloud by day and fire by night was who you call Jesus Christ. They go your first church of the Lamb of God when our ancestors came out of ancient Egypt. That's why he said, remember the Passover and remember the beginning of the first church of the Lamb of God. Baptism is the gospel. So 
Understanding now, that's why every day before you go to bed, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Forgive me of my sins, the ones I've committed willingly as well as unwillingly. Wash me in hyssop. Make my sins as white as snow because I do not want to hide anything from you, God. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. Now, the Holy Spirit is coming in your life. Now, the power of God will be manifested in your house while you sitting on your chair, while you on the back porch, while you on the front porch, while you drive in your car out of nowhere, the Holy Spirit will fall on you. Everybody on here that ever had the Holy Spirit fall on you in your car while you was driving, listening to some praise or some worship music, put a number eight in here. You ever been in your house? and the presence of God hit you. Put a number eight in here. Baby, you don't need church to get close to God. The church in the way. This whole time, the church was in the way. So everybody that's been taught that Jesus died for all of their sins, they in sin. And they trying to, try to figure out why they can't stop fornicating. That's the sign that you in sin. You can't stop fornicating. You can't stop committing adultery. You can't stop hating people. You can't stop with your racism. You in sin. You got to first get out of sin for God to help you. So I want God to fix my heart I'm going to confess my sins first. Give me uh, Isaiah 59 and 1. This is why Romans chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Watch. You guys hearing me teach and you trying to figure out, well, how is he, how is he making us understand this so easy? because it was given to us. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, give me verse two, that it cannot hear. But your sins, what advantage then have the Jew, or what profit there of circumcision? Chiefly, in every way, because that unto us were given the oracles of God. The oracles of God are the records of God, not just the Bible, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Sin separates you from God so that he will not hear your prayer. That's why the Bible says that he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. You need to go get this book if you want to learn more about the olive tree. Proverbs chapter 
at verse 28 and 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So who been answering your prayers? Satan. Everybody that was taught that they don't have to keep no law. Satan answering your prayers. Good job, Garland. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. That if, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth the will, him he heareth. What is the will of God? Give me Psalms 40 and 7, 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Thy law is continually in my heart. It's in my heart. Where can we precept that? With Hebrews 8, 8 to 13. The new covenant. Everybody put a number five in here if you're under the new covenant. Put a number five in here if you're under the new covenant. All right. Now we're going to see if we are under the new covenant according to the Bible. Give me Hebrews 8, 8 to 13. Now we're going to see. We say we're under the new covenant. Well, we got to go identify with the new covenant. That's right. That because you you practicing the word. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Stop. Welcome to Gadi University. Who did God say the new covenant to? Who did God say the new covenant is to? Once again, you say that the Gentiles got to be grafted in because the new covenant is to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. The same people that were part of the old covenant in Exodus 24, six to eight when he sprinkled the blood on the people that was the first covenant that's the old covenant now we got a new covenant who is it to the same people now the gentiles supposed to learn about the god of abraham isaac and jacob from us. But the Gentiles stole the church, changed all of the ordinances, told everybody Jesus died for your sins, and you're still living in sin, and you think you're going to heaven. The Bible tells you about fornication. Boyfriends and girlfriends. Let's see what the Bible says about avoiding people in fornication. Let's just look 
Let's see what the Bible say. If Jesus died for all my sins, why is God warning me about fornication? All you got to do is think, brothers and sisters. Don't let the church put in your head something that's not in the Bible. Why? We're going to be judged by every word that's written in the Bible. So what I got to do? I got to line up my life with the word of God. If my life is not a reflection of the word of God, then I'm going to be judged by the parts of the word of God that I have not humbled myself to line up with. Watch, watch how much God talk about fornication. It's all over the New Testament. He don't even want you hanging out with fornicators. Why? There's a spirit there of what? Lust. Perversion. That's what Christianity teach. Is there any sinners in heaven? Is there any sinners in heaven? First Corinthians 6, 18. Flee, fornication. Every sin that stop. First Corinthians 6, 18. Put it up there. Flee, fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Watch. Flee, fornication. Every sin it's a sin. Fornication will keep you out of heaven. There are no sinners in heaven. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. If you are practicing fornication right now, you, the Holy Spirit is convicting you. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuses of themselves with mankind. They not going. So what I got to do? Make sure I ain't doing none of that. That's in there for me to read it and say, okay, I got not, I got to make sure I'm not doing that. Why? I want to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So now I'm going to ask God for strength to not to do that. Because I know that going to lead me to hell. And I don't want to go to hell. So I'm going to ask God to help me not to do that. 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever could have committed sin transgressions also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now let me ask you a question. When Christ was hanged on a tree, was that the law? Are on the cross. Was that the law? I'm just making you think right now. People say, what, all 666? Ba brothers and sisters, all 666 don't pertain to my everyday life. What are we dealing with on an everyday life. Every day. Let's take, 
let's take a Monday. When you go into the world, when you go into the world to go to work, what you deal with? We're going to deal with the basic sins that we deal with every day. What? Fornication. What else? Adultery. What else? Lying. What else? Stealing. What else? Killing. Satan tried to tempt you to kill people. Those are the basic things that you can name the, the ones that you got to keep. People say, oh, what all, all 600 is, no, baby. Satan, everybody got different sins, weaknesses that Satan use against you. Some people, cigarettes. Some people, alcohol. Some people, sex. Some people, lying. Some people, stealing. Some people, bearing false witness. Everybody got a different sin that Satan is using against you because everybody got different weaknesses and everybody got different strengths. So what you supposed to do, identify your weakness, take it to God and God will turn it into a strength. Christ said, all of those that are of the truth come to the light so that their deeds might be seen that they are wrought in God. What that mean? That mean everybody that don't like coming to the light, they love darkness rather than light. They don't want you to talk about their sins because they're ignorant of this one fact. If I hide my sin, I give Satan power over me. If I confess my sins, I bring it to the light. Now it takes away the force and the power of that demon that been trying to get me to hide it. That's why he always trying to get you to hide sin. Because that's how they keep control over you. And you say, I can't stop sinning because you hide it. God already sees. So why don't you just admit it? If you admit it and say, God, here go my secret sin. What? The Bible tell you about secret sins. Let's get it. All you got to do is fast, pray against the spirit of addiction. You tell addiction to get out of your life. You don't ask Jesus to help you with addiction. You identify and you start praying against it and you start fasting against it and you take authority over it in the name of Jesus Christ and tell it to get out your life. And one day you're going to get up and you're going to throw up and it's going to go because it's subject to faith in the name of Christ. Yeah. So now I'm keeping the law. You're supposed to keep the law. If you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. That's easy. Sin is sin. <laughs> That's why you're guilty of all, because sin is sin. There ain't no little sin, no middle sin, and no greater sin. Sin is sin. It's sin. That's all. The Bible says that there is no temptation that is not common unto man, but with that temptation, God will make a way of escape. Satan, see, that's why people, I don't understand, but let me explain. When you say, Jesus died for all my sins, where the devil at? If Jesus died for all your sins, why is the devil in your bedroom? Why is the devil on your front porch? Why is the devil 
at your job? Why is he still trying to get you to sin? Because if Christ died for all my sins, that means that the devil can't mess with me no more. But he's still there, isn't he? Give me uh, Matthew 5, what is it, in 20? That except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let's see who's going to go to heaven. What did the, the Pharisees and the scribes do? For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? I don't want to follow the scribes and the Pharisees. What they do wrong? There you go. Psalms 19 and 12. Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep me, keep thy servant from presumptuous sins. And let them not have dominion over me. Put that back up again, brother. Garland, you guys need to see this. Let not sin have dominion over me. What did Christ say? He said, sometimes these only go out through prayer and fasting. You got to fast if you want to be free. You got to go to war because a war has been declared against you. You just don't see it as a war because America, through their commercials, have made it all normal. They made sin normal. So when I first got the call from God, in 1997, I knew I was dealing with lust. So what did I do? I went and got anointing oil, extra virgin olive oil. I prayed over it after confessing my sins. I prayed over it. Now, the Holy Spirit showed me this. Every day I got off of work, the Holy Spirit would make me go into the shower. Take the anointing oil and anoint my private parts with the anointing oil. And I will be in the shower praying and crying for deliverance. I can't remember how many days or months had went by, but I eventually got delivered from lust. So what did I do? I identified my weaknesses so that I could serve God. That's where most men of God miss it. They get the call of God, and then they want to go minister for God, and they take lust into the ministry. They take perversion into the ministry. When they were supposed to go first into their house and close their door so that they can be purified and cleansed by the Holy Spirit, delivered and anointed by the real Holy Spirit. So what Satan does, Satan comes in, and when he know the man got the call of God, he encourages the man to just go to the pulpit. He don't need deliverance. He fine. So the spirit of lust and perversion goes dormant on the inside of the preacher. So now the preacher is good. He's a minister in the church. He's not the pastor yet. So those spirits are contained, dormant inside of him, waiting for the right opportunity. So they wait, and then he becomes the pastor. And then when he becomes the pastor, 
those lust and perversion resurrects. Now he's sleeping with the church members and he's trying to figure out where it came from. It came from when he first got called to the ministry. It just didn't come because he was the pastor for two years or three years. He had those spirits before he entered into the pulpit. They just went dormant for a season and then they waited for him to get in a position of power so that they can destroy the church through him. So if a pastor, whatever spirit he got on him is going to go to the rest of the church. Because the church is supposed to be sanctified in a holy place where evil spirits cannot reside and live. But if I, in my ignorance, because of my secret sins, I open up a door that gives those spirits the legal right to be in that church. So over time, the people in the church are going to start to feel what the pastor is feeling because the same spirit that's on him is now on the church members. This is spiritual warfare at its finest. And another way for Satan to get into the church is for you to play worldly music. It's called false fire. He's always trying to get away into the church to destroy it from within. Using what? Sin. All he got to do is get you to compromise. That's it. To get you to compromise. The church supposed to be holy. The pulpit supposed to be holy. The door supposed to be prayed over and anointed. All of the pews supposed to be prayed over and anointed with the blood of Christ. Everything on the inside of there. How can you defile that with sin? So the man got to get free first. He got to go through his purification to be made ready for the pulpit. That's why you see so much shenanigans going on in the church. Remember, none of these churches, give me seal portion 88, no, give me seal portion 14 and 71. Give me cell potion, 14 and 71. And I'm going to finish. There you go, right there. When these things are made available to the world, then it's time for you to come out of the abominable church. We're going to put that up again. I want everybody to see that. This is a prophecy about where we are right now. Remember, the real church started when we came out of ancient Egypt, the church of the Lamb of God, the church that was in the wilderness. That's in your Bible, in the New Testament. It tells you about the church that was in the wilderness. We're going to get that next. And when these things have become available to the world in the day 
that the Lord shall bring them forth. Then shall the world know that the Lord hath begun to prepare his saints by gathering them out of the great and abominable church of the devil. And he shall gather out his saints and give them the mark in their foreheads that the apostle John had described in the record of the Jews. And when he hath marked his saints in their foreheads, then shall he release his judgments upon the great church, which is the mother of all abominations before him. That's happening right now. God's judgment is upon the church. That's why you see seeing the leaders' sins being made manifest. And he's telling you to come out of her. Revelations 18 and 4. There you go. Still posing 88 and 60. And when the elect have received the fullness of the gospel, which is the seal of God in their foreheads, then they shall begin to prepare themselves for the coming of the Lord. We preparing ourselves right now for the coming of the Lord. colored brothers and sisters. Much love. God loves us all. All he's doing right now is he's giving us a higher knowledge of our history and ourselves to prepare us for the coming of his son. I love each and every one of you with the love of the Lord. So we will see each other face to face in the kingdom of God on earth. And we'll be able to hug one another. We'll be able to laugh and cry with one another. Hold on. Hold on. Remember, 
Don't let anger into your heart. Keep it out by any means necessary. Love your brothers and your sisters like Christ would. Satan, the Lord God rebukes you, and I rebuke you. Shalom.